It would be amazing to know how a cancer begins. It seems like so many things these days have a may cause cancer label on them, but we don't really know why these exposures are associated with higher cancer incidences. The current model says that tumors begin growing because of typos in a cell's instruction manual, or its genes. We call these typos mutations, and we think that cancer is caused by mutations in the kinds of genes which tell a cell when to grow and how much to grow. But if this were the whole story, we would be able to find cancer just by looking for these mutations. You could look for a cancer-associated mutation on that spot that's hard to put sunscreen on, and you'd find the cancer before it became a problem, which sounds easy, right? Well, what we're starting to learn is that healthy cells can also sit around with the kinds of mutations that we think cause cancer. So what's up with that? This is telling us that while mutations may change the instruction manual, a cell may not actually become cancerous until it gets an extra nudge and is forced to follow those messed up instructions. In our lab, we use a mouse model of skin cancer that relies on this puzzling force. The dangerous mutations aren't enough until we apply a second chemical called a promoter, and this pushes the mutant cells to grow. In other words, I'm completely fine on the dangerous rock until a giant gust of wind comes through to knock me off. So I'm using this model to understand what the second chemical, the promoter, is doing, because I think it will help us understand how other parts of our environment may also push the mutant cells that exist in our bodies to become cancer. Now, an important feature of the promoter that we use, and probably of many other promoters, is that it only works if the force is constant. So this means, that how the skin responds to a little nudge rather than a constant push may be different. That's why I collect samples over time so that I can look at which instructions the cells are actually following. Are they listening to the instructions of how to be skin cells? And when do they start to do something completely different? These measurements are showing me some fascinating biology of how promoters actually work with the mutant cells that are primed to grow. Eventually, I think we can make similar measurements for other agents in our environment that we think may cause cancer. Because if we can understand how these environmental exposures promote mutant cells to grow, it just might give us that extra nudge, one step closer to how a cancer begins. Thank you.